have to renounce the hidden things, the, the shameful things. See, in other words, watch this. Come on, see if I can help you. There's some stuff in our lives that we need to bring to light. Stop trying to hide it. Stop trying to be an undercover saint. You're leaking. It's coming out and folks see it. And the more you leak, the more people see it and they try to help, but you keep covering it. Be holy. And holy simply means that I understand my shortcomings, but I trust God. Are y'all with me here? He says the first thing we got to do is renounce the hidden things. If I'm in this ministry, I can't walk around like I got it together. I, I, let me say this. Folks will appreciate you better if you be holy. But secondly, yes, he says they'll also appreciate you if you be honest. Look at the rest of the text. He says not walking in craftiness. Y'all see that? Be honest, he says, nor handling the word of God, what? Deceitfully. In other words, he says, you first got to be honest. Stop giving advice that's unbiblical. Folks flock to get your opinion, and then you give advice on how you feel, but not what the Bible says. You're not being honest. You're giving ungodly advice. There are preachers who create sermons that are full of clever sayings, but have no truth in them. And we eat all the stuff up, but we don't grow from it. We say anything to get cheap accolades or cheap amens. We need to be honest with folk. What's honesty? Here it is. Tell them the truth. Stand on the word and allow God to let the chips fall where they may. Here's the problem. Come on, y'all got quiet. We pacifying folks too much. We trying to satisfy them and stroke them and make sure we don't step on their big toe. But if you're wrong... You need your toe stepped on. If you're out of line, you need to be put back in line through the word of God. Do y'all hear me? He says we got to remain holy. We got to be honest. And then we also need to learn to handle the word responsibly. He says it right there. Uh, uh, but manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Y'all see that? Uh, uh, he says we've got to handle the word of God. Let me, let me read it to you again. He says we don't walk in craftiness, nor do we handle the word of God deceitfully. Does your Bible say that? In the Amplified Bible, it says we don't adulterate the word. In the English Standard Bible, it says we don't tamper with the word. In the New Living Translation, it says we don't distort the word. Are y'all with me here? What is Paul saying about the word of God? He says simply this, that you, when you give people advice and you open up your Bible, listen, if you don't know the answer, tell them you don't know the answer. Stop trying to front like you some Bible head and you give them stuff that's not even in the book. Paul says, don't handle it wrong. The word handle in the Greek, he literally means this. Stop being a dishonest peddler. What do you mean a dishonest peddler? In his day, they had wine peddlers who would come around selling wine. But in order to make the wine stretch, they added water to it. I wish I had somebody. And, and folks didn't know whether they were getting wine or good wine or whatever. Remember the story, he saved the best for last? That's because folks were watering the wine down. Paul says, don't be like a wine peddler. When you give the word, don't water it down. Don't filter it. 
Don't unadulterate it. Don't distort it, but give it like God told you to give it. And let me say this, and if you preach the word, you ain't got to worry about nothing else. Are y'all here with me? He says, don't handle the word of God in the wrong way. And then look at verse 3. Come on, I'm closing. He says, but even if our gospel is hid, it is hid to those who are perishing or lost. He says, not only are you supposed to uh, remain holy, not only are you supposed to be honest and handle the word responsibly, but also don't hide the gospel. In other words, don't make it difficult. Preach it simple because folks are simple. Preach it so it's plain. Amen. Preach it to those, he says here, that are not only who may not believe, verse number three, is veiled to those who are lost, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Notice, not only preach it to those who are lost simply, but also to those who are blind. Because the God of this world, of this age, the devil, has blinded our eyes. Now, here's what I love about this verse. Come on, y'all need to stay with me. Don't go to sleep. Here it is. Notice it says he's the God of this age. The devil is real. Now, I know you, they got the movie out called The Last Exorcism. But I stopped by to tell you, there are going to be more exorcisms. Because the devil is real. And he is the God of this age, this world. And his purpose is to take our eyes off of Christ to blind us from the truth. Are y'all with me here? What he wants us to know is that he is real, alive, and he is in our lives to distort what God is trying to do in our lives. Oh, I wish I had somebody. In other words, he says, the reason we are even here is because God has kept the God of this age at bay. Now, here's the good news. Here's the good news. Watch this. Even though he's the God of this age, he's term limited. Meaning what? The God we serve is eternal, but the God of this age has an end. He's term limited, meaning what? That he's not going to be here forever. Hallelujah. So it says in the text that he has blinded the minds of those who don't believe and who don't see the goodness of God. I'm motivated to keep going because of what God has done in my life. Now, 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 the temptation to preach about self is motivated by congregations who want their ears tickled, who want a fancy, fluffy word, who want you to run the aisles and act like a fool. Are y'all with me here? But the truth of the matter is, Paul says that the minds of those who are blinded don't believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Can I make it plain to you? We were in darkness, stumbling and bumbling over furniture. God comes along and flicks the light on and shows us how to get past the obstacles. He's shown light on us that we might see through darkness. The problem is the God of this age comes along and flicks the light off. So that's why you've got to have Christ as a lamp unto your feet.